Imagine a world where buses don't need fuel, charging stations, or even a single drop of gasoline to run. Now, picture one man building 500 of them from scratch, completely self-powered. That man is Maxwell Chikambutso, an inventor whose work defies everything we thought we knew about energy. His buses don't rely on diesel, electricity, or even solar panels. They run on something far more revolutionary, something many claimed was impossible. And today, I'm going to attempt what he did building my own self-powered bus, step by step. The journey starts here, in an empty workshop, with nothing but raw materials and sheer determination. But before we dive into construction, let's rewind and understand how Maxwell pulled off this miracle. Born in Zimbabwe, Maxwell was always fascinated by energy, how it moves, transforms, and powers our world. While others accepted the limits of physics, he questioned them. What if energy could be harnessed in a way science hadn't yet discovered? That question led him to his first breakthrough, a generator that produced more power than it consumed. Experts called it a hoax, a violation of thermodynamics, but the results were undeniable. From there, he set his sights on something even bigger, transportation. Buses, trucks, and cars guzzle billions of gallons of fuel every year, choking our planet. What if they could run indefinitely without ever needing a recharge? That's when Maxwell designed his first self-powered bus, a vehicle that generates its own energy as it moves. No plugs, no gas stations, just pure innovation. Skeptics laughed, but when his buses hit the roads, the world took notice. Now, with 500 of them built, his technology is reshaping the future. So how does it actually work? The secret lies in electromagnetic induction and kinetic energy recovery. As the bus moves, its wheels spin a series of high-efficiency generators. These generators produce electricity, which powers the motor, creating a closed-loop system. The faster it goes, the more energy it generates, making it theoretically limitless. Of course, physics says energy can't be created from nothing, and Maxwell agrees. His system doesn't create energy, it taps into underutilized forces already in motion. Think of it like a windmill, but instead of wind, it uses the bus's own movement. Now, let's break down how to build one. First, you need a sturdy chassis, the backbone of your bus. Steel or aluminum works best, strong enough to support the weight, but light enough to maximize efficiency. Next, the wheels, but not just any wheels. These need to be connected to a regenerative braking system, capturing energy every time the bus slows down. Then comes the heart of the operation, the generator array. Custom-built electromagnetic coils sit near the axles, spinning as the wheels turn. The faster they spin, the more current they produce, feeding directly into the motor. But here's the tricky part, balancing input and output. Too much resistance from the generators, and the bus slows down. Too little, and it doesn't produce enough power. Fine-tuning this is where most attempts fail. Maxwell's genius was in perfecting this equilibrium, making the system self-sustaining. Now, for the motor, a high-torque, low-energy consumption design is crucial. Traditional electric motors waste power as heat, but Maxwell's design minimizes losses. Every joule of energy is optimized, keeping the bus moving smoothly. The final piece, the control system, a network of sensors and microprocessors constantly adjusts power flow. If energy dips, it slightly reduces generator resistance. If there's a surplus, it stores the excess in ultracapacitors for later. It's a dance of precision, and getting it wrong means a stalled bus. But when it works, pure magic. Now, let's talk about the moment everything changed for Maxwell. After years of prototypes, his first full-scale bus was ready for testing. Critics gathered, expecting another over-unity scam to debunk. The engine hummed to life, no fuel, no external power source. Then it started moving, slowly at first, then faster, cruising at 60 kilometers per hour effortlessly. The crowd fell silent. An hour passed, then two, the bus didn't stop. No overheating, no power drain, just consistent motion. That was the breakthrough, the moment the impossible became real. Now back to my workshop, can I replicate even a fraction of that success? Let's find out. The workshop is silent except for the hum of tools and the occasional spark of a welder. My hands are covered in grease, 
blueprints sprawled across the workbench. This is where theory meets reality, where Maxwell's ideas become my hands-on challenge. The chassis is welded, the wheels mounted, but the real test begins now, the energy system. I slot the first electromagnetic coil into place, securing it near the rear axle. One wrong connection and the entire circuit fails. The generators must spin freely, yet produce enough current to keep the bus moving. It's a delicate balance one Maxwell spent years perfecting. Next, the motor, a refurbished unit, stripped down and rewired for maximum efficiency. Traditional designs waste energy as heat, but I've added cooling fins and ceramic insulation to minimize losses. Every volt counts in a self-powered system. Now, the control board, a maze of circuits and sensors that will regulate energy flow. I solder the last microchip into place, fingers steady but mind racing. Will this actually work? The first test is simple, a push start to see if the wheels generate any current. I hold my breath and give the bus a shove. The wheels turn, and the voltmeter flickers. A tiny surge of electricity appears, just 0.5 volts, but it's there. Progress. Now, to amplify it, I adjust the coil alignment, reducing friction while maximizing magnetic flux. Another push, this time 2 volts. Still not enough to sustain motion, but the principle is sound. Maxwell's early prototypes faced the same hurdles. His breakthrough came when he switched to superconducting materials, minimizing resistance. I don't have that luxury, so I improvise, adding extra coils in parallel. The third test sends the needle jumping to 12 volts. Enough to power a small light bulb, but not a bus. Yet, days pass in a blur of adjustments, tighter windings, better bearings, precision calibration. Then, the moment of truth. I connect the motor directly to the generator array. No batteries, no external power, just pure energy feedback. I push the bus again, harder this time. The wheels spin, the motor whirs, and for a split second, it feels like magic. The bus rolls forward on its own, then stops. Not quite self-sustaining, but close. The issue? Inertia. Real buses weigh tons, and my miniature version can't store enough kinetic energy yet. Maxwell solved this with ultracapacitors, lightning-fast energy reservoirs that kick in during lulls. I bolt one into the frame and try again. This time, the bus moves and keeps moving. Five feet, 10, 20. It's working. Not at highway speeds, not for miles, but it's proof. The same principle that powers Maxwell's 500 buses just powered mine. Now imagine scaling this up. Real buses, real roads, no emissions. A transportation revolution. Critics still debate the science, but the results speak for themselves. Maxwell's buses are on the roads today, defying expectations. And while my build is rudimentary, it's a glimpse into that future. So what's next? Refinement, more efficient coils, better energy storage, smoother transfers. Maxwell didn't stop at version one, and neither will I. But for now, the takeaway is clear, self-powered transport isn't science fiction. The science in action. And if a DIY workshop can get this far, imagine what engineers worldwide could do. That's the real promise of Maxwell's work. Not just buses, but a new way of thinking. Energy isn't just something we consume. It's something we can harness smarter, cleaner, endlessly. So what do you think? Could self-powered vehicles replace fossil fuels someday? Or is this just a stepping stone to something even bigger? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'll be reading every one. And if you're as fascinated by energy breakthroughs as I am, check out my video on wireless power transmission next. Who knows? The next big discovery might be yours. The bus rolls to a stop, but my mind is already racing ahead. This isn't the end. It's just the beginning. Maxwell's full-scale buses don't just work. They thrive under real-world conditions. So what's missing in my prototype? The answer lies in the details. First, efficiency. My makeshift coils lose energy as heat, a problem Maxwell solved with cryogenic cooling. Superconductors, chilled to extreme temperatures, can carry current with zero resistance. It's the holy grail of energy systems, but liquid nitrogen isn't exactly garage-friendly. So I compromise, wrapping the coils in copper cooled by miniature vortex tubes. 
Not perfect, but better. Next, scalability. A toy bus moving 20 feet is one thing. A 10-ton vehicle carrying passengers is another. Maxwell's secret? Distributed generation. Instead of one massive generator, his buses use dozens of smaller units along the axles. Redundancy ensures that if one fails, the rest keep the bus moving. I replicate this, clustering microgenerators around each wheel hub. The result? Smother power delivery, less strain on any single component. But the real test comes when I add weight. Sandbags piled into the bus simulate passengers. The first attempt is a disaster, the motor stalls under the load. Back to the drawing board. This is where Maxwell's genius shines. His designs use torque multiplication, gearing that converts slow, heavy rotation into rapid, efficient generator spins. I scavenge parts from an old bicycle drivetrain, rigging a makeshift gearbox. The difference is instant. The weighted bus now moves, lumbering but unstoppable, like a waking giant. It's progress, but not yet reliable. Then comes the breakthrough. While tweaking the control system, I stumble onto a quirk of physics. Pulsing the power in short bursts instead of a steady flow reduces energy loss. It's called pulse width modulation, and it's how modern EVs maximize battery life. Applied here, it squeezes every drop of efficiency from the generators. Suddenly, the bus travels farther, faster, with less effort. This must have been what Maxwell felt like. The euphoria of a puzzle finally clicking. But the road ahead is still long. Real buses face hills, rain, potholes, conditions no lab can fully replicate. Maxwell's team reportedly tested their vehicles on brutal inclines, in scorching heat and freezing cold. Each challenge forced another innovation. Self-adjusting suspension, hydrophobic coatings for the generators, even AI-driven power distribution. My workshop can't match that, but I can push further. I take the bus outside, onto a slight incline. The first attempt fails, the motors whine, struggling against gravity. But with a gear ratio adjustment, the second try succeeds. Slow, grinding, but undeniable. Climbs. This is the heart of invention. Iteration. Failure, tweak, repeat, until the impossible becomes routine. Now zoom out. Imagine this tech applied globally. Cities where buses never refuel, where smog-free streets are the norm. The implications are staggering. Consider the numbers. A single diesel bus emits 1.3 tons of CO2 monthly. Multiply that by millions of buses worldwide, the savings are planetary. But skeptics still question the science. Over Unity devices, machines that supposedly create energy, are a carnival of scams. How is Maxwell different? The key is language. He doesn't claim to break physics. He exploits its gray areas. Every system loses energy, heat, sound, vibration. His tech recaptures what others waste. Think of regenerative braking in hybrid cars, just taken to the extreme. Still, challenges remain. Durability, cost, public trust. Building 500 buses is one thing. Maintaining them for decades is another. And without transparency, critics will keep shouting hoax. That's why open collaboration matters. If this tech is real, it belongs to the world. Which raises the ultimate question. What's next? Governments are already circling. Zimbabwe plans to replace its entire fleet with Maxwell's buses. Other nations are watching, wary but intrigued. Meanwhile, labs worldwide are racing to replicate and improve the design. Because innovation never stops. Maybe the future isn't just self-powered buses, but self-powered everything. Cars, trains, even planes. A world where energy isn't mined or burned, but harvested from motion itself. As for me, I'll keep tinkering. The next goal, a full-scale prototype. Bigger coils, better materials, real-world testing. Maybe I'll fail, but maybe, just maybe, I'll inch closer to Maxwell's vision. And that's the thrill. Not certainty, but possibility. So let me ask you, would you ride a bus with no fuel tank? Would you trust technology that defies convention? The future isn't built by skeptics. It's built by those who dare to try. Drop a comment with your boldest energy idea. Who knows? 
your thought might spark the next revolution. And if you're hungry for more, check out my video on magnetic levitation trains, where physics gets even wilder. The age of clean, limitless transport is coming. The only question is, will you be along for the ride?